<laughs> By the way, this express is very good. We won't tell you that. <laughs> we know we're not sponsored by them. Okay, no, we won't say anything. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> if they want to sponsor, but they maybe can, uh, coffee. We'll say it. <laughs> maybe coffee will come soon, right, Mike? Uh, did I make it good? Yeah, yes, very good. Did I make it good? That's all that matters. We'll, uh, we'll have some espresso coming soon. We don't. We don't have Antonio we'll have, here with us today. We'll have a store near you. We don't have Antonio here with us today, so I had to make the coffee. Where is Antonio? Antonio is so, some somewhere in um, Maine? Maine. That's what he says. Anyway. He's talking to the crabs, he's talking to lobsters, you know. Yeah. He, he sends you this video where he, um, you know, he talks to fish. You know? I thought <laughs> he was going to eat the crab. I thought he was going to eat the crab in the video. Wait, why do you th why do you think you don't believe him? Is it because of uh, Milan? Yeah, yeah, of course. He's hiding. Uh, it, uh, Milan is doing so poorly that he doesn't want to show up. He doesn't want to show up his face. He doesn't want to show up here. He doesn't want to talk about it. So, yeah, I guess hmm. he'll wait another week rough start for them mm -hmm. but a great start for Juventus who just we just watched the we finished watching the game here it is incredible to me that Juventus with basically one new player in the starting 11 look completely different clear ideas better mentality everyone knows where they're supposed to be 3-0 win against Verona Verona who just beat Napoli also the week before and I told you guys I had a stat to blow your mind I just fact check it to make sure as it was true Juventus have their first away win in the Serie A since January 2024. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. That's sad. And it, sad. From, from a team that made Champions League nonetheless, wow. <laughs> to not have won a game away. That's crazy. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Uh, Vlaovic scored twice. Looked pretty good. Looks like uh, he's on fire. Um, and you know who, so, who impressed me? Who, again, I'm just saying, like, a new coach can, comes in, and the team can look different. Look at Telly. Look at Telly. I haven't seen the desire from Look at Telly like that in years. The way that he's winning the ball back, the the movements that he's making, and to think that he was booed in Juventus's first game, not official game, the the summer game against the Chi team. What a what a good turnaround he's had. But for well, Juventus, it's it's been the story. Well, there are some uh, some people sitting on the bench that are that are very good. So he, if he wants to keep that position, he better improve his game. That's the thing. Juventus is not even uh, playing Douglas Luiz yet. Turam, we know he got a, a slight injury. Um, a lot of the, the new... Uh, Danilo, the captain of Juventus last year, can't even get into the starting 11. They play Savona, a young kid that's been at Juventus since he was eight years old. It was his first start today. He also scored a goal. So he's integrated also all these yeah. young kids. And he played last week too. And last week he came in as a midfielder and then he would go back... If uh, the midfielder Cambiaso would go up, he would go back and play uh, defender. So I think he started as a defender today, right? Yeah, he started in, in, as a right back. Right. It, it's just, there's some people who always question how much influence does a coach have. I think this is. This is one extra example of Thiago Motto who's come in and immediately turned things around. Is it too soon to say if Juventus are contenders? I think so. I still think, even though they're the, they're the only team to win the two games in a row. When you talk about this team winning, I have my question marks, but then you look at the Mercato that they did. Conte Sao, signed. Nico Gonzalez, signed. Cup Miners, they say is about to sign. They're adding, and they're, they're even talking about still Jaden Sancho as another player. And, and, and these guys haven't played a game yet. Yeah. And they play a lot of youth. Uh, he's been get, giving so many chances. Yildi's starting uh, two, two games, two assists. He's given... Um, He's showing meritocracy. He's a coach that shows a lot of meritocracy, and he's not scared to play the youth players. He's not scared to make mistakes of playing younger players that that deserve it. And so far, he's compared to other old school coaches that rarely play youth because they're scared. Mota's the kind of modern and forward coach that I think Serie A is in dire need of, and more teams should definitely be following his kinds of uh, logistics and how he goes about the teams because. Where, where, wherever he goes, it feels like he's just upping the value of everyone. It shows the uh, what he did with Bologna. It was no fluke. Like he really brought in players that maybe they weren't, don't seem as good by themselves, and made them play as an incredible team, and made them two times a player that they once were before he came. I like that everybody plays football. I like that every player on the team they they play, they pass, they're involved, they go forward, they know their role, they know where they're supposed to be. Is Juventus Scudetto favorite? What do you say? Well, I was going to say no, 
because they, they haven't played. Uh, I want to see them against uh, better teams. But then when I look who's behind them, <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, they're going to be contenders. Because uh. <laughs> behind them, there's n I, I haven't been impressed. Top two? Yes. Yes. Top two? I would say the top two, um, mostly because of, look at the, the spending this year. I mean, you look mm. at all the other teams. No one even comes close to what Juventus is putting down. And I mean, obviously, you mentioned, like, listen, this is a team, the starting 11 this year, nobody was new, right? Or if there was one player that was new. So Thiago Mota is, is able to, you know, uh, assess this team and, and none of his newcomers have, have really integrated into the roster or really, um, you know, gotten, let's say, the, the reins of Juventus. But they spend money. So they have to be a contender or one, two. You know, uh, then when you look at Thiago Mota and what he did with Bologna, you say, okay, this guy looks like, you know, he's able. if he's able to get in within the locker room, he's going to really be able to, you know, express, or, or rather Juventus is going to be able to express his style of football mm -hmm. really, really easily. And and listen, he's he's had the chance now to put some of these young guys in, like Mike said, and these guys are, are proving that, uh, they can play at Juventus, and and even for Thiago Motta, I think there was a clear indication from the top where yes, you're going to get these top players, but we have to also assess the guys coming from Serie C and this second team. And listen, Juventus, you know, I said it before, but that Serie C team, mm. the next gen team, you know, now it's I think the fourth or fifth year, I forgot forgetting exactly, but they've been able to sell players from that that second team and not directly affect that first team. And in the end, now you're able to buy more players or buy better players for that first team. That's the future of Italian football. The future yeah. of Italian football is having the second team that plays in Serie C. Atalanta does it a lot as well. They do a pretty good job at bringing those guys up and giving them a chance. But Juventus have done it almost to perfection. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's going to be this year. And the problem, or at least what you thought of the uproar of Chiesa leaving, people don't even mind it just because he doesn't even seem like he's needed in the system. Just how well Juventus are playing. Also because the reinforcements. I think I was I was mad at Chiesa leaving and I still think it's it, I still think it's very silly the way that it's gone about. But then when you tell me that you bring in Nico Gonzalez, Conte Sao, and even maybe, maybe Jaden Sancho on top of that, it makes the pill of Chiesa a lot easier to swallow. Top two for you, you didn't answer. Well, I wouldn't say favor just because I think Inter are reigning champs and they, they're getting only better. But yeah, top two for sure. They're definitely going to be there to the last match day, and who knows? It seems like we want to talk about a team that um, that I was very wrong about, at least early on. I think all of us were. Milan, Fonseca. We don't have uh, Antonio here. He's running away to, mm -hmm. to Maine, apparently. They look like a disaster. Not just the results, which the results are pretty bad. You, you lose to newly promoted Parma. They were down 2-0 to Torino right early on and then the substitutes came in and they made a difference but it's the lack of intensity the lack of intensity from this team that we were we watched Milan in the preseason we said oh my god they look so far advanced they beat Real Madrid they beat Man City they beat was it Barcelona I think it was Barcelona it was the third team that they beat yeah we we watched them against Man City and uh, uh I remember looking at them and saying, wow, I'm impressed with the uh, tactics of, uh, of Fonseca. The team is very short. Uh, uh, Salamakers was very wide on the left side. Shukawesi was very wide on the right side. They would be uh, beating the man, crossing the ball. As soon as they lost the ball, they would get it back right away. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing like that on this team. Uh, I mean, Salamakers is not playing. Sugar Ways is not playing. Uh, they had this guy, Liberali, who I was impressed the way he was playing in midfield. Um, there was a few other... Uh, Camarda. Well, no, Camarda wasn't, wasn't, wasn't there. He wasn't there, but there was a few other players there. And they were playing great. But none of those guys are playing now. And he's got all these players. And there's nothing that... Uh, <laughs> that they doing that they did in the preseason. So I don't know what I, what's going on with uh, Fonseca, but they looked really, really bad. To touch on that point real quick, I it was on my mind because you think about um, the Euros, Copa America that happened over the summer, new players coming in, not having that time to really do a preseason. I wonder if the teams that are doing better, even like Torino, like those squads, it's because they're just 
okay, maybe there's more quality players on the bench, but let's play the guys who have been there longer, who had a less strenuous summer. I don't know, something on top of my mind that I was thinking when, when you mentioned like this Milan side, maybe those guys that he started in the preseason, yeah, they're not the best players, they're not the most quality, but they're probably more prepared for the start of the season. They, they were hungry. I mean, they were running 100 miles an hour. I don't, I don't see this guy is even running. It's so slow, even they, the way they bring the ball up. I mean, there was no urgency, nothing. I was, I was disappointed. I think also, listen, preseason, it's important, especially when you have a new coach, to be able to implement the, the new tactics. But it's exactly that. You know, a lot of players are still getting the, you know, mm -hmm. minutes in their legs. When you're versing the Man Cities, the Real Madrid's, the Barcelona's, you know, this is just for them to kind of get into the swing of things. So, But you still think you, the movements. You, you take it with a grain of salt. That's how, that's how I would say. I, yes, you can see the movements. But really with Milan, the problem has been and... And, you know, it hasn't been addressed is the defense. Yeah. Okay. Because we, we were talking all, you know, um, you know, about international players. That Milan team, who's international? Tomori didn't play. Palabri didn't play. Pavlovich. Okay. Pavlovich, who is the only guy that I give the pass to. Hernandez. And he did well. De Hernandez. De Hernandez, okay. Two, two but he kept four. Salamakers. He was he had Salamakers there as the left back last week. De Hernandez is so, pretty bad. I see the way that they are pressing, you know, or playing up high up the pitch. They're not, you know, uh, Fonseca is not realizing that the team is suffering in the back. Mm. You're you're still trying to figure out who's the right partnership in that center back position. I know Antonio keeps on saying Gabia, Gabia, which you know something to have to you know to be considered. But defensively, they're an embarrassment when it comes to defending, especially Parma. They they literally were doing the same thing over and over yeah. again. Yep. And you weren't I mean, adjusting, learn from that. you know? And so, like, you want to keep the high line, great, but you're going to get uh, countered. And so that's another thing. When you verse the Man City, they're not really going to counter. Yeah, they're exactly. going to try to keep the possession. Which Milan is probably, better, <clears throat> is probably better playing on the counter. Because when they play up in the pitch, okay, I understand they want to do this press. They want to they want to suffocate the opponent. Number one, nobody was suffocating their opponent. Pulisic was not running. Lau was not running. Uh, Musa was not, nobody was running to close down the, the, and win the ball quickly, which means that there's a big gap. They break that line very quickly. And then with two passes, Padma's already through. That's the first problem. Yeah. The second thing is from 10 miles away, from, from 3,000 miles away, we watch on TV, Milan every week, you know that the defense is a problem. The defense has been a problem for years. I mentioned it a million times, 49 goals conceded last year. 10 teams had a better defensive record than Milan and finished second place. How do you not solve first thing? Guys, let's not concede goals. Because the Milan attack, I think that they, even if they stayed back a little bit, I think if they the guys up front are creative enough, that they'll find the goals. But apart from that defense, we, which we all knew was a, a glaring problem, not just from this season, from previous seasons also, um, it seems like Pioli didn't look as bad as what it seems with Fonseca. Yeah, whatever, it's early. I don't want to say anything now. We're jumping the gun. There's still you just came, uh, it just started two rounds in, but Milan's attack. There's no. I mean, if you compare the Mota style to Fonseca, first of all, I was never a big fan of Fonseca. Sure, from even for Roma, from Roma, his playing style I don't think is very attractive. He doesn't get the most out of the attack. Um, but if you compare watching the Juventus game and then watching the Milan game, you you think it's like a different sport almost. And these guys can't even attack. They do the same movements. The, if there is any movements and there's no creativity, you're hoping for Lau to do the same thing, try to be four guys, yes, which is so unrealistic. And you're like, what, what is going on? And then you're like, you sack Pioli to do this. And then again, it's still early. I don't want to criticize too much because I feel Anto already breathing down my neck even though he's not here. What was he saying? Was he uh, here for the game? Uh, yes, he was. Uh, no, he was. He was not happy. He was just like. Um, what did he say? Something about Fonseca? Because the newspapers are already saying that Fonseca is under trouble, and he's got to play Lazio this week. Which, if you don't get a win against Lazio, then all of a sudden the big guy, the big new Gazette, is going to be putting you on the front page saying that he's going to lose a locker yeah, room. You're on the hot seat. This is your you're a coach of Milan. Just started too. But you're on. You're the strange. coach of Milan. You know, if you, yeah. God forbid, you have one point out of nine. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's trouble. That's deep. The also, the teams floor. that you played, like, you, you should have you should have been able to do better. Yeah. The other thing um, to add on top, uh, they, do, they don't have a backup for, for Morata. I mean, again, 
a thing that is so they obvious Oka, Oka and glaring. Okafor, Okafor is not. Yeah, Okafor is not to start for Milan ball. as the striker. Jovic is not for Milan to start as a striker. Yeah. You need a guy. You need a guy off the bench that has a lot of experience, like like a Milik, for example. Let's just throw a name out there. Somebody that has a lot of experience that has played there before. They didn't, re they didn't replace Juru. That's crazy. They didn't well, they, they did with Morata. Uh, it's not the same player. Think, I don't even think you, but good. you need another guy. I don't think against uh, Morata's good. Morata's, I don't, I don't Morata's good. Against Morata's good. Against Morata's good. Against scored his first game uh, 10 minutes after I, coming on. Overall, as a player, I don't think he's good enough for this Milan. Bro, he's a captain of Spanish just national not, team that just won the Euros. Okay. They could have won it with any, with any other strike. I don't agree. Bro, his press, the way that he presses, it really helps teams out. I don't think, I think not having Morata is a problem. They had Colombo against, uh, if I remember, against Man City. He, now he's on... I'd rather play the youngsters that they were you know, playing in so, our preseason. But he's just saying, Colombo's not there anymore. Yeah. So if I, you know, if I was, uh, uh, you know, Fonseca, I would have put all the young players, those guys, yeah. they would have run 100 miles an hour. I'm, I'm telling you, they wouldn't have lost the, the way they lost now. I mean, Theo, okay, you put Theo there... But on the first goal that they scored after a couple of back. minutes, I mean, he, he was jogging. Was the guy's back. in front of you. The guy's in front of you. Hey, you jogging? And the guy's not offside. Okay, I can understand. If the guy's offside, it's three, four yards, maybe you let him. But the guy's right in front of you, and you jogging back? I mean, I would have pulled you out right there and then. I would have taken you out and put somebody else. I would have made two subs in the first 15 minutes. Oh, I would have put uh, three subs, I said, to put. I mean, Okafor, oh, I, I don't see him nothing. as a center forward. Nothing. I mean, Calabria is not an AC Milan player. Calabria is barely a Serie A player. I don't yeah. know is so and, Barely. You know, and, and then the other thing that bothers me about this AC Milan is the body language mm. of some of these players. I mean, Leao, come on. The guy is so talented. He's so fast. He should have been involved. And if he loses the ball, he could care less. <laughs> and if he crosses the ball and the ball goes to another player like he did, uh, he just jugs back. Hey, I lost the ball, so what? How many times do you think he lost the ball in that game? Well, I heard you what you said. Oh. Uh, so How many I, times do you think so he lost the ball? At least 12 times. Yeah. What's your number? Uh, yeah. 17 times. Wow. Yeah. And one of them led to yeah, the to goal. The, to uh, the goal. Yeah, he led to the goal. Jesus and what Christ. did he do? When he, he jogged back, he was he was. To be honest, I saw I watched it after he was on his knees, like crying and hit, and hitting the floor. Yeah. But there's it's not just loud too. Yeah. I watched Pulisic walk for a lot there's a lot the, of the game. You know, too. you gotta you, cry before not. After. I noticed Fonseca being frustrated, and and I'm thinking it's it's about layout not tracking back because especially when you press high, it's so important that as a unit the team moves up and down, right? And it, once you have that one person that doesn't yeah, press. It's like as if you didn't press, and it's rather but it's, you just but sit it's, back. It's hundred percent not just layout because so, even Musa after the game uh -huh. said, Musa after the game said, I did not know in the first half if I was supposed to press or if I, I was oh, supposed to back off. That's on Fonseca. That's then. really that's scary. That's on Fonseca. That's then. scary for your defensive midfielder to not know. Guys, are we going or are we not right, going? Right, but the the game that we watched live, I mean, as soon as they lost the ball, they got it back. We didn't have few. But seconds. they were different guys. They got it back. Yeah, they were guys that were more prepared. So. Or get rid of these players and put the put the players until they're, they're gonna, ready. They're, they're ready and they're going to run and they want to and they want to win the game. Because some of these players, to me, felt like ah oh, okay. If we don't lose, you know, I couldn't believe what, what Theo did on, on the first call. I, I couldn't believe it. I was able to watch the game next to Canavaro, and you get to take a couple of snippets. And I won't say who he was talking about or, or anything in general, but he mentioned one thing, and and I'm going to use this a lot because I think it's really good. He says, you understand the mentality of a person, of a player, and of a team when you don't have the ball. Just think about that. When you don't have the ball, you understand the mentality of a player or of a team. And that sums up a lot of what Milan was in that game. And I know we talked how bad Milan were. Pekia's team of Parma, they played the game to perfection with intensity, vertical, aggression, picking their moments. With three passes, they would get into Milan's box, into Milan's area. I mean, it was brilliant display. They sat, after after it went to 1-0 one, one and then even 1-1, one, one, they sat in the 4-4-2, they defended. But the thing that I like is once they win the ball back, it's not, guys, let's pass it around, hold on. Slow, left back, center back, center back, right back, boom, boom, all the way. No, it's direct. It's forward. It's guys running in behind and finding the space and then being clinical in the moment. So Padma could have won this game by more than 2-1. And I'm happy that Padma were able to win because they were the better team. I agree. And 
you know, the players also, talking about youth, you know, Parma, although they bought a lot of the players within the last three years, let's say, but these guys are all young. These guys are all aggressive. These guys are all, they fit into the coach's plans. And that, I think, is the is very important. Whenever you go for a transfer market or, you know, you look at players, they have to fit within the coach mm. or the coach has got to be humble enough to make the team work. If the players are the players that he has, you you figure out a way. Mm. And so that's a lot of times, you know, we see someone like Fonseca, is he able to either one, get the players that he wants, which he also got Fofana, got, you know, so this it's still a, a team that is coming to life in a sense, but he needs to, he doesn't have much time when you're, when you're on the, you know, on a Milan, let's say. I expect them to be further along than, uh, than what they were. But yeah, credit to Padma. Dennis Mann, two goals in his first two games back. I know he scored 11 goals in Serie B, but when you take the step up in yeah. categories, it's it's different. Uh, Bernabe in the midfield, I thought was brilliant. Even though the way that he wins a ball back, he wears number 10, but he's really not a number 10. He, he, sits, deeper. he sits deeper yeah. and he's very creative with the ball. Boni up top, the French kid, he holds the Great ball and it's impossible to stop. He lets his team move forward on the pitch. Who else is, and the fact that you could put Cancellieri in to a match, they made good signings. Ankvist, too. I think he's the one yeah, who gave Kuli the pass. Kula Bali, the right back. It was great. Suzuki, the goalkeeper. He kept Leo in his Leo. pocket. Oh my gosh. But like you said, right idea, right mentality, prepared. The team was very, very, very impressive. Uh, Parma was. They were impressive against Fiorentina. They didn't make the most out of their chances tonight. Uh, not tonight, the other night. They didn't make the most of their chances because they could have scored even more but they were able to get the job done and it's a remarkable start and it's a very tough start to the season for them because they play Napoli next, right? I believe it's Napoli. Yes, Napoli. Their first three games of the season were Fiorentina, Milan, and Napoli. For a team that comes from Serie B, you say, all right, if we get even three points from that, it would be it would be great, right? Three or four points max. And the fact that uh, they're there already with four says a lot about the, the squad. Anything else or maybe, we move on? Maybe it's the year. Maybe th this year is a different year. Maybe it's a year of some surprise that is going to come and they're going to show us uh, what some of these young players can do. I would love that. I, I saw a great stat too last year. 66 goals from 14 different players from Pekia's men. So they're really not reliant on one guy. Then they're, they're not a, a one player system. It's the team that is involved in all the goals that makes them a really good squad. And the last thing about uh, AC Milan I mean, if you're going to play the four-two-three-one, or which it becomes like a four-three-three, I I remember in the Euro the the Spanish team, which I love the way they play. You know, they had Nico on uh, wide on the left side, and they had Yamil on the right side. But those guys, when they lost the ball, they became fullbacks. Mm. I mean, they would chase the man. Uh, it's a lot of sacrifice. Now, are you going to ask Leao to do that? Of course not. Then, then you can play the four-three-three or the four-two-three-one, because um, he does not, uh, you know, he does not defend Pulisic. I think Pulisic yeah, at times he sacrifices himself. He goes down. Maybe he has to um, review the way, uh, you know, his formation, because um, he might not have uh, the players that um, the way he wants to play. Where are we going next? You guys going to have to help lead me a little bit because I missed uh, I missed a lot of the other games. Napoli. Napoli? I, was, I love to see. That was the game that I was following uh, the most because I really wanted them to win. It was nice to see Conte finally yeah. celebrate <laughs> his first goal. I think, I think he needed it. He really Otherwise, did. he might have resigned uh, at, the end, at the end. But they look pretty good. I mean, it was a... You guys didn't see that? I, I saw that. I watched like the long highlights. Oh, God. I mean, they yeah they definitely dominated. They got the goals that they needed from what they didn't against Verona, uh, against a horrible Verona. So they they pretty much look like their old self, dominating. It was nice to see Conte screaming uh, and all that stuff on the sidelines. Um, but it, it's it's gonna take some time. This is still without uh, Lukaku, so they did a great job without Lukaku, and I'm sure Lukaku is gonna be integrated pretty soon on their on their next one but this is definitely something to build on and who knows with uh they lost a, one, a first game horribly but if they can get some traction after uh from this huge win they can i think they could be uh, contenders for top four for sure the first goal looked like a very conte style uh goal it, it reminisced me of when pirlo the made the pass to Liechtenstein 
in the first game of Juventus in 2011, finding finding the the fullback and Di Lorenzo. Di Lorenzo yeah, it was yeah. nice to see Di, yeah. Di Lorenzo get a goal. He had we gave him a hard time all summer with Italy, and and he really really struggled. Then he was about to leave Napoli, and then Conte wanted to keep him there. So it was emotional for him to to score the opening goal of uh, of them. And uh, I saw Neres came in. He got an Net, assist Net right away. Played good. He looked good. He was beating his opponents. He was very tricky. He's gonna be very fun to watch, for sure. He got he got a great assist. He beat his man and sent it right in the middle. They're getting McTominay from Manchester United. They're getting Gilmore That's from a Brian. One. McTominay, huh? He Conte likes the English players. These he likes players that come from England. It's what? so strange. These British players come to Serie A. <laughs> Physically, they're way more the prepared. Yeah, yeah, the they're big, they're big, and he relies. Big. Remember, like with Ashley Young, he was huge on like a player like Ashley well, those Young. Those guys, you know, they run. They run for uh, 100 miles an hour for 90 minutes. They don't stop running. Even though there's uh, 30 seconds left in the game and they're losing, those guys, they always run. So he likes that. They also, everybody knows exactly what, uh, with Conte's team, mm. everybody knows exactly their position, what they do, what their responsibility. And um, I like Karaskelia. I think he's touching a lot of, uh, he gets involved in every play. He's more central. Uh, yeah, that he goes up. I mean, he, the, the, the guy he can beat his men all the time. He's got the skills. Mm. He's got... He's got everything. So, getting him involved, and um, I can't wait to for the uh, uh, when he gets a, a center Me too. forward. Me too. In there, I mean, Raspadori. He tries. He tries very hard. He had a couple of chances. He took a couple of shots, but um, he's not it. No, the way that Conte plays, he needs that Hold big, play. big yeah. rum 100%. up there. Raspadori's so, I, I think when when he finally gets uh, the team and he gets the center forward. I think Napoli is going to be fun to watch. Me too. I agree with that. It was good to see. Any th any takeaways? Oh, just an nah. important response. Obviously, it looked like uh, Napoli was burning from the first game. Right, three nothing. You're like, oh my god, what's going on? But I think the the response was uh, was needed. And Conte is 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 a coach that's going to demand the most from his players. Like you said, Di Lorenzo, the captain, which had a a rough summer scores the first goal of a Napoli campaign, um, and I think once once the the players start understanding Conte's style and system more and more, and he gets a Lukaku, this team should be you know running on all cylinders. I hope competing for the Scudetto. What do you that's, guys think? That's my hope. I think so. I, th I really think I, I was scared for a minute. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, you know, I was very confident in the beginning, and then the Mercato was was a disaster, all because of this Osimhen case, which both Osimhen and Napoli have completely fumbled. They they made a disaster out of, for me, nothing. And I lost some confidence because he didn't get the guys that he wanted and he, we know how Conte can be. Yeah. But he also feeds off of energy. And when there's good energy from the crowd and, and from the team, it only makes him better. And it seems like his players responded really well after that because I was a little scared on the make or break of some of the guys maybe not, not liking the words that he said. Real quick on this Osiman thing. I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. I'm annoyed on every side. I, I mean, Osiman has a contract. It's not like the Kiesa situation where the guy is, they're going to lose him for free. They're getting no offers. They're getting no offers. Saudi Arabia, okay, he's not going to go to Saudi Arabia. We already understand that. You can't see Osiman, who is winning top goal scorer in Serie A, go to Saudi Arabia at this age. He wants to compete in Europe. It's expensive. PSG, they don't want him. They don't want to spend the money. It's expensive. So, but but my point they is, they froze him out. My, but exactly, and they lost and Just, they lost from there. Yo, you have to keep the, him. The, that's the thing with the clubs when they show interest that they don't want them anymore. You autom you're automatically on the back foot. But that's usually that's for a, players whose contract strategy. expires. That's usually oh next summer we're gonna lose him. We need to put a hard line. In this point. You don't have an offer. You still have a contract. You should be training with the team. Keep playing. And then if an offer comes and you sell them, okay, that's fine. But now, if Osiman does have to stay in Napoli because they can't sell him, which Bad. I think it'll get resolved in the end. I think this yeah, is like a game somewhere. of chicken and Chelsea will end up paying, whatever it is. If it doesn't, now you have a player who has been with the squad but hasn't been training with the team and is going to be behind in, the, in all the aspects. So, sorry, uh, behind, uh, like, in, in terms of understanding his role. What a what a mess. Gaetano, what do you what think? A uh, contenders for Scudetto in Napoli or no? Yes, yeah. I okay. think once they get uh, the rest okay. of the players in and uh, Conte's got a little bit more time uh, to put them together, yeah, okay. they're, they're going to be uh, they're gonna be contenders. What happened to your Roma? What the hell was this? 
They look mm. like a mess. Roma is a disaster. Roma is a, a disaster. I mean, you have somebody. I I know they went they went for Sule, but if you got somebody like Chiesa that is out there, uh, get, get Chiesa. And, and I mean, they hit the post a couple of times. Mm. Uh, they, they were, were a little bit unlucky. They were unlucky too. Um, uh, they. Um, Dybala at the end, I mean, he took a shot. I thought it was in for sure. So th they deserve the tie, but um, the team uh, the, the team is not uh, the, the chemistry. Pellegrini, he tries. He tries very hard, but um, he, he hit the post too. I don't know. There's something there that it's not it's not clicking. The the new center forward. Dove Beek. Dove Beek. You know, Didn't I, start well. Huh? Didn't start well. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's you need he's somebody. Too. Uh, he's not very involved. Even, no, even for him not. Like, I mean, you I, can I get see, away with it if you're you not. You know, I see the I see the Bala getting involved. Pellegrini wants to get involved. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Sule was struggling on that on that goal that they received. I mean, he was watching. Um, so they they he has a lot of work to do. The Rossi. Is, is he the issue? It's tough. Is it De Rossi? Because he, he, he came in, he started doing really well for, right. for Roma, uh, and we thought maybe with a preseason, but now it's they'll a be fine. But now it's a different season, the other teams. Um, but Empoli? Mm. Empoli? They barely saved last season. I know. I think a point. And they didn't do anything to better the squad yeah. either. <laughs> but I, I'm, so, I'm surprised that Roma, because they didn't, the center forward is a big issue, and the wing is a big issue, and I think they, they would have done much better. Do you think Dybala's regretting <laughs> not taking that over now? On second thought. There's all these memes saying oh, after the loss to to Empoli, they're saying, oh, is the offer still on the table? Because it could have been a nice moment for Roma. Obviously, you don't see very uh, very often in the modern game a player like Dybala. He had $75 million on the table from Saudi Arabia. It looked like he was going to accept it. He decided to reject it for the love of Roma. I respect it. Or as our producer, Mr. Enrico, says, because his wife told him that uh, we're staying in Rome. <laughs> she, like, passed a little too much. You know about that now, right? You got to listen uh, to everything your wife says. Uh, we barely saw you for, like, six months I forgot after you got married. A bit, but, you, you think if you give, but you think if you give his wife $50 million, uh, she wouldn't change her mind? I, I mean, they they're very young. They do have Look, a lot of money, He also, too, he also just got called up to Argentina. Which, that, I was, yeah, I, that was good. He, you're not going to get called up to Argentina if you go to Saudi. Yeah. But you're also not going to... How much playing time is he going to get? No, but still, it's important to be part of the national yeah, team. Yeah, we still want to be part of it. They, they're going to go on and win. Uh, yes. They're going to compete for a World Cup. There's a lot of factors that goes behind the uh, uh, reason. Minutes, though? thing is, he's 30. He's 30. You could I'm wait four or five years. Okay, maybe you're not going to get 75 million. You get 50 million. You don't know if the uh, office is still going to be on the table. He's very injury prone. We'll go too, to another Saudi say. Arabian team. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Listen, everybody happy, makes their choice. I'm happy to stay, though. I don't, everybody happy makes stay. their choice. I don't really judge on situations. But this one with Dybala, it would have been very bitter if he if he went to Saudi Arabia. It, it would have. Like, this was strange. Just like Milinkovic Savic leaving uh, to that was weird Saudi. That too. was weird. I was like... Come on. You know, because he was still a top. Yeah. He was the, one of the best midfielders in Serie A. Then he left. And I was like, oh. Oh, and also Gabri Vega. Remember Gabri Vega? He went there, completely forgot about him. He was supposed to go to Napoli, like very highly rated. And then, you know, Crazy. what the hell happened to him? Listen, Crazy. it's not for everyone. And also at the same time, it's it's not, uh, you know, like all these guys that are young, they have to be, they have to consider staying in yeah. Europe and, and continuing, you know, their legacy more than than money but it's hard. obviously it's every player you know everyone has the right to to do what yeah. what works for them so ultimately we can't uh fault them or no but we can't we can't judge or say oh why do you go there it's uh, a decision that they have to make with their family and I agree. as our producer said maybe there was uh <laughs> some uh you know family member that uh was would have been on the, on the first flight out right saudi arabia forget <laughs> it only if Annalisa said yes. <laughs> uh, where are we going next? We got Torino that beat Atalanta. We've got Fiorentina that once again tied against Venezia. Inter beat Lecce 2-0. Mm -hmm. And then Udinese beat Lazio 2-1. Where we want to go? We want to talk about Torino? How well they've been playing? Start it. They, Lead us the off. I mean, the first game against Milan, we knew they drew 2-2. But, you know, 
up top, maybe a little bit inexperienced in terms of that. They get a lot of chances. Uh, they play great football overall. Very refreshing to previous uh, Torino season. And just lost Belanova to yeah, Atalanta. Yeah, one of their better players uh, from last season. They lost and key guys, key strong pillars. They look great. The Buongiorno, they're Ricardo not Rodriguez. Clinical. But their mm. play is great. They create a lot of chances. If they're a little bit clinical against Milan also, they would have won that game all, uh, too. Milan just got the goal, and then whatever, they, they ended up playing. But I'm actually excited to see how Torino do this season. And I haven't, I, I don't think I've ever said that before, because Torino are usually very boring, gritty kind of team. Good defensively, but poor offensively. And they also have Ricci, one of the few Italian, I think one of the few, very few Italians on the team, maybe the only one. Well, um, because they lost two of their guys, yeah, they right? They lost two of their guys, but um, this is a definitely an exciting project. Yeah, I the only see how they do. The only other Italian in the um, starting eleven. But they have those random kind of uh, players from all around the world, but they kind of gel together. It's it's fun to to see them. Listen, the Torino fans were very very uh, aggressive. Let's say with, with Vocal. Cairo. Vocal with Cairo, yeah. and they they told them to, to sell Rightfully the team. So. Yeah, Obviously, so. you know you sell. Your your uh, best right back, you you know, especially then you sell Bongiorno, you, you, Ricardo Rodriguez doesn't resign, so you lose a lot of these these pillars as you Players, mentioned yeah. for this Torino side, but and and yet they still good. able to to play well. Good coaching I think decision. I was about to say with Vanoli, I think that's Great coaching. Uh, really really the reason why this team is is looking the way it does. And listen, they also made some smart uh, moves. Such Nobody as? knew about this guy Coco. But yeah. he's played really, really yeah. well. Uh, che yeah, Adams che coming Adams. from the Premier League. Another British fellow. Yeah, nice, interesting uh, player that can that can fit. He's uh, within Scottish, well, Scottish. One of them. Within, uh, yeah, and then Zapata Scottish. is the producer saying. I think Zapata, tell you Big the time. truth, is a type. Yeah, he's the captain, and that's a player that Milan, true. You true, need. True. They, they don't have that number guy. nine yeah, that's yeah, been yeah. playing Good in point. the Serie A that Good can point. score goals, but. You know, you have guys up top that, that can score. Let's see what happens this last week of the market. I don't expect any major moves, mm -hmm. but they they've got 25 million for Bellanova. Yeah, but I'm should I, be able to invest. They should, but I don't expect title, anything. I haven't really title, seen I seen enough. much. But they beat Atalanta. We gotta give them a lot of credit. That's huge. Getting four points against and Atalanta and Milan their season openers. That's, that's amazing. That's a huge uh, Atalanta of I think deserved a little bit more. They missed the penalty. I mean, they they Pretty hit the chances, they they, um, chances. they had chances. They hit the post. I I thought Atalanta deserved uh, at least at least one point from this game. I listened to Gasparini after the match. He says he's lost thirteen different players. Thirteen players have left Atalanta since June, since the end of last year. Losing thirteen players in a squad is not easy. Thank God they solved the Lookman situation. They also added Belanova. I mentioned it already. And Cuadrado. Zaniolo. Yeah, it's Zaniolo before. So I meant uh, just oh, like okay. recently. So it's surprising that they lose this game when they were looking like things were better. But I think it's one of those situations where it is going to be a little bit of growing pains in the beginning for the team, which is natural. They beat Lecce. They did amazing during that. But when you go up a team against a team that's very well prepared in Torino, that looks like they're more advanced in, in their, um, their preseason training than they were, it's normal. But this Atalanta side, I'm telling you, but they're another team that... I, I know I'm not saying anything when I say this, but if we're surprised again by them, is it is it crazy to think that this team can compete? If they they got no. they got top three, another, they got to get another defense, another center back or two. Because I'm not convinced with their back line mm -hmm. at all. They gonna, keep playing Deruna a lot of times. They're going to be top back. five. Top five, I I, I get. Atalanta is going to be top five. I'm saying more. I'm saying more. I'm yeah, saying more than top five. Can this team go on a crazy no, run? Not with a, not with Can they go defense. on a crazy run? Not with that defense. They, they got to fix They got to fix the they went, they went Something far, about this They team. went far in the Europa League, and they played versus some tough yeah. teams. I mean, it's they they beat uh, Bayer Leverkusen. They didn't lose a game the whole season. No, it's and true. Gasperini, you know, out outclassed, um, you know, that, that team with Xabi Alonso as the coach. And then to get their Liverpool as well. So, the, the you know, if they... I, I think the biggest thing with, with Atalanta is just the consistency part. And that was something that they, they lacked last year when it came to the, the season. Mm. Besides the, the cup, right? Now they're in Champions League. You know, they've... They lost some players, but they also spent well, some money. They did spend. They were very, they were very quick in, mm. in getting new players yeah, when yeah, quick Skamaka got injured. Boom. The thing they with Atalanta, though, Pete, is they, they're 
in the transition of a big team, but I feel like they kind of still act like a small team. Look at their back line. Deron, he's not a natural center back. He's doing good, whatever, but he's not a natural center back. Hien, I don't think he's a great center back. He makes a lot of mistakes. We've seen it already, which is uh, bad. Jim City, okay, you can say he's a good one. But if you're playing in these multiple competitions, you're playing in Champions League, you need caliber. I'm not saying spend uh, no. 50 million, but get quality guys. They should have. You know would have been. Center back you know would have been a sick move for them, like a guy like Bongiorno. That would have made a statement. You get a guy like Bongiorno you in your back line, like a like a. To, yeah, but so but someone that that knows the league well. I agree. But someone that can. Because their, their other own. moves, their other moves have been very good. They also added Samaritic. I mean, Retegi too has been playing well up top. Retegi, three goals in two games. He's nine Serie A goals away from Skamaka. Last yeah, year, by the way, said, yeah, just, just throwing just it out. Just their defense there. is the problem. Uh, the yeah. center back in particular. I, I agree. I agree with you there. I do agree. Uh, Lazio against Udinese. <sighs> Lazio. Surprising. But only, you know, the first game, he looked like he had this team, you know, playing in a certain way. And then, you know, this game versus Udinese kind of went out of their, their reach, I guess. But, listen, this Lazio team... We talk about Torino not spending money. Yeah, even worse. Lazio even hasn't really done anything that, that yeah. impresses me. You know, especially after losing. They pretty much lost a lot of the guys that they went to Europe with. You know, when you talk about Immobile, Luis Alberto. Milinkovic. Milinkovic from the year prior. Like, so a lot of these guys have, have gone. Felipe. And Felipe is another one. And there isn't anybody that, you, that, that goes to this team and you're excited about. Mm. There could be maybe some diamond in the rough, but nobody that I say, oh, this is a team that we got to watch out for. So I feel like with Baroni, especially after what happened with the coaching staff um, last year, uh, I'm sorry, this summer with Tudor, I think it's more so like Anno Zero. This is the, yeah, the rebuild year. Definitely. Let's see what happens. If we get into Europe, great. But as long as we get in that, let's say, left side of the table, that's what we're really hoping for. Top 10. Definitely. Yeah. Top ten, no. It's got to be top seven. Well, he said left side. Yeah, but top, top seven. I was just explaining what that meant. For I don't know. The team doesn't really. I think there's better team. I think there's seven, eight better teams. I think they're gonna be fine for a conference Lazio. league. That's about it. Cause their lineup, if you look at it, it's uh, Castellano. I don't think he's. Uh, I, there's a lot of players that that need work. They got Dia that's gonna come in too. I Nelson looked good in the first game. Dele Bashiro as well. Uh, let's talk about Inter. Last team. 2-0 yeah. against Lecce. How did it go? I didn't see this match. Uh, I think it was a comfortable win for Inter. Very I think they were very solid and pragmatic in their approach. Obviously, Lautaro was was out, so it was interesting to see Taremi Turam. And I think Taremi, for the most part, had a good, good game. Got assist, he just right? didn't get the goal, let's say. But, you know, it's somebody now that Inter can say, hey, we have, if Lautaro yeah. is out, Why you have somebody that can mm -hmm. come in. Uh, and Arnautovic even came in. As, to have him as the fourth striker is a real luxury, I think, and, and something that you need when you want to go into Europe. Milan. Do you hear this, Milan? Yeah. You, know. least, you, you need so, rotations. And then one other thing that I would say is, like, this Inter team is a well-run you know, run team. Mm. Everyone knows their job. Everyone fights for each other. I mean, look at Mkhitaryan. The guy is 30. How old is he? I think he's 35. 35 years he's old. 35, he yeah. plays every game, every minute of every game, and he's tracking back. He, you know, everyone has their has a role in this team, but they're all willing to fight for one another. And I think that's something that if you look at the team across the pot, you know, Milan, let's say, is the is the complete opposite of this Inter team where, where the, you know, the players are willing to sacrifice for one another. And Milan, I don't see that. P and for the back line when everyone's healthy, uh, do you keep it the same as it is as Pavard, Acerbi, Bastoni? Or do you slip maybe the the Vrayer? Listen, Acerbi... Like Pavard, well. No, I'm saying I think I think Acerbi stays in uh -huh. just because he's, he's done a fantastic job while he's been... He's been grandfathered Inter. in now. And those two guys, the Vray and Acerbi, are oh. older. So I think you're just going to see more of a rotation. Bastoni and Pavard, you need, especially in the back three, you need somebody that has the ability to go forward. Mm. And give mm -hmm. you the, you know, the numerical advantage when when you're when, when you're when playing. You have attack, right? Yeah. Okay. Something about uh, this Inter team, which is incredible, they playing Lecce. Do you know how many spectators were there? Were there fifty thousand people? I think huh? more, no. Or maybe more. More. Uh, I don't know if you could check, Mike, but 
They always have a great turnout. You know, I can't believe, I'll try. you know, Inter is playing Lecce. They got 50,000 people watching the game. Napoli is playing. They got 50,000 people, you know, uh, watching. And then you you see some of, of these other teams, which they want to go high. 70, 71. What? 71. 71,000 for a Lecce 70, game. 70,921. I mean, no, so this, the I, mean I look at, at Fiorentina. There was nobody there. I mean, you want to support your team. Go and support your team, you know, and, and fill up that stadium. Well, Fiorentina yeah. fans are just not happy with their team. You know, there was nobody there. Everything was empty. I, no, the construction is the curva. It's under construction. But I was watching the center. There was a little... Yeah. There was not too many people there. So uh, something that is something to say about Inter and Napoli. It's, it's a nice... I mean, it was nice to see Parma, too. The uh, the stadium was filled right. out, but I'm not saying you know, Parma was playing against a big team. Yeah, but, exactly. You know, Inter is playing against Lecce. Yeah. You know, and Napoli is playing against the you know not not a big team, and uh, you know they um, it's nice to see. They always do. Inter, Inter's always Inter, been like that. Inter always has yeah. very good yeah. turnout, regardless of who they play. Yeah, the the, the Serie A is crazy this year. It really, I mean, it has been in the last years, but it feels like especially this year, these like low to medium teams. On their day, they could do they could do stuff that we we can't explain. It's crazy. It's actually crazy the discrepancy in this league that one week something insane can happen, and it's becoming less and less of a surprise. I I catch myself consistently looking at a matchup and making an argument for both ways. And it used to be in the past I'd be like, all right, I know what's gonna happen. It was one sided. It was like ninety percent. I was pretty sure what's gonna happen. Now I'm going to this same like when I watch Padma Milan. Before the league, before the, the before I watched the first match against uh, Parma, I said, all right, Milan's going to win this. Milan's going to win for sure. Then you watch Parma play. I watched them play in the first game. And I said, me, the matchup is bad. They don't, they, they don't show too much respect for Milan. They have courage. And that game, I said, everything shows. Quality-wise, Milan should kill Parma. They should blow them out of the water. This is a Parma of a Serie B team, a team everybody from Serie B. But I call myself saying... I can make an argument that Parma will at least get a result against Milan. I was sure that they would at least get a result. Milan I didn't think like they would win. Milan looked like they just got promoted to Serie A. If if Parma you change the jerseys, good. if you change the jerseys, Parma a neutral so person good. would think that Parma is Milan. But Bar Parma plays. So, if you guys actually watch a match, their their levels better than Milan in almost every aspect. But that's of what I'm game. saying, and and you could say that about a lot of teams in Italy. Oh yeah, I know. You the, could competition, say that. the competition, the competition is just it's very kind, high. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's a tough league. Anything else? Any final thoughts before we end? Are no. we going to find Antonio? Is he ever going to come back? We'll FaceTime him. Let's see. If they lose against Lacho, he's he's oh, done forever. It. He's going to be hiding. That's he's it. I have to make a bunker I for didn't him. Answer. He actually called me two minutes. I didn't answer. You didn't answer? No. We're in the middle of a thing. Call him live. Give him back? Call him live. Okay. Good. Just tell him, put him on speaker and say, why are you running? Let's see what he says. Why are you hiding? Why are you hiding? Let's see if he answers. If he doesn't, we'll end the podcast. If it's like he knows. If he doesn't answer, I'll say, yo, Cassano's calling. Call me back. He's going to call immediately. Yeah. It's like he knows that we're going to make fun of him. <laughs> Man, he usually answers right away. No, he's not answering. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Anto, what cave are you in hiding for Milan's uh, loss? Oh, my God, my God. I was disgusted. I was disgusted. Yo, I, I, uh, until I came to the studio, everyone was making fun of you. I, I was trying to defend you, but I just joined in with them. Who was making fun of me? Everyone, everyone. Yeah, a, a Ryan menu that jerk off. No, oh, yeah. Peter, especially Gaetano, Marco, forget it. Get out. Yeah. Marco was not here. Marco was over there. I know, the he's here now, though, but and he was making fun of today, I'm saying. Really? They kept laughing. I was like, guys, oh. come on. It's, a, it's a beginning of the season. It's only two games in. Cut them some slack. Really? And Anto, and Anto, tell me the truth. You're not. You're you're in New York, right? You just didn't want to show up to the podcast. I don't understand. No, I wish. Mike, I could. I put you on the speaker. I, I put you on a live video right now. <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. Andrew, you're in the middle of a podcast, though. I, I, let me call you back after. Forza Parma, Grande Milan. Hey, are you gonna? Are you gonna? Are you gonna sleep with the fish tonight? Oh my 
Okay, listen to me. I got Tano Messina. When I got over there, I'm going to kick your ass. I'm <laughs> Anto, we miss you on the podcast today. We ended the episode with uh, with you speaking. What do you want to say to all the Milan fans? Give them some hope real quick. Uh, I just tell them, guys, hang in there because for us, it's not fino la fine. There is no end. They're never going to end. We're never going to drop dead. As much as you guys want, we're going to get you back in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, so, Fonsec, so Fonseca is never going to end. He's always going to stay. Uh, for now, it's not. Okay. If you lose, the, if you lose the Lazio, what, do, what would you do? I will keep him while I'll keep him. Okay. I'll keep him until the panettone, but by Christmas, uh, everything everything is supposed to be in upswing and we're supposed to be uh, fighting and challenging again. Listen, Actually, Tell me. Yeah. Listen, listen, now listen. that you know Fonseca personally, uh, can you give him a call? You're interested in Chiesa? You want to buy him? I will take Chiesa. I will definitely you need defenders. Chiesa. Forget about Chiesa. You need real defenders. Take Kiss and I will take. Uh, oh God! Anyone? I mean, I will take. Uh, listen, anyone? I, I will just, I will just <laughs> take sell, anyone. I will just sell. Not Calabria will definitely keep it, but not, not, as, a, not as a defender. But Tomori, I can't stand him. I can't stand Tomori. Yeah, lose another defender. All right, Anto. We'll catch up with you later. All right, we're gonna end the podcast. Oh, you ended the podcast. So you got me over here live. Yes, you're live. Yeah, so Yo, hey, s- sign us off. Sign us off. Tell them to like, subscribe, and return yeah, on the next listen, episode. For all, for all my IFTV followers, for, for all the uh, IFTV podcast fan, just make sure that you're not to lose hope, especially if you're an AC Milan fan. Make sure you like it, which, which is the finger up, right? Like it is the finger up, right? Mm-hmm. Depends what finger. <laughs> no, no, no. The thumb, right? Oh. The, the thumb. Oh. And then the thumb. Subscribe. Push it all the way in, guys. Okay? Push it all the Thank you, Anto. Nice way. Right, bye. bye. I'm going to delete his number. <laughs> all right, guys. With this guy anyway. any, any, anything? Anything to have from that combo? He said push it in. <laughs> push it on. Which Antonio is hiding. That's uh, that's uh, that's my uh, my take. We should do that. like the you know where's Antonio? Where's Messi? Where's Messi? Where's uh, Antonio? Where's Antonio? Uh, <laughs> what is that? All right, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Ciao, ragazzi. And Forza. Bye.